Tom. How are you? How's it going? Can you hear me? Are we live? Hello. I'm all right. I'm all right. Where, where are you at the moment? I'm in a service station, actually. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's cool. So on the road, technically. Living the dream over here, as always. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All is good. All is good with you. It was uh, it was fun at the uh, Watch Pro live event. I I really enjoyed it. Did, did you? It's a good event to be fair. You never know how these events are going to be. Sometimes they're a bit strange, but it was really really good. Really good brand turnout and some really nice people as well. So no, I had a really good time. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, you're 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 very right. It depends on the brand showcasing, but more importantly, it depends on the people you meet there and then on the spot, I guess, as well. No, it was good. It's good to catch up with uh, with Damien from the the watch guys or the car guys, as many of my audience will know him as. Um, I've not actually met him in person properly before. We've just sort of exchanged messages and whatnot. So that no, was good. good. Interesting. Yeah. And it gave us a it gave us a bit of a feel of what's going on with watches, huh, Tom. I know you're happily into your cars, of course, and watches they go with it as the love of mechanics uh, uh, is involved. But uh, we're living precious times in, in terms of, uh, of for, you know, for the watch brands and for those really offering quality and the creative, creative uh, timepieces. Yeah, I think for, from my perspective, I've been collecting since about 2007, 2008. Um, yeah. It's kind of got silly in recent years as I've had the means to kind of collect properly. Um, but from my perspective, it's nice to be able to see the more creative brands, the interesting brands now getting a bit more limelight and actually getting the credit that they've deserved for quite a long time. I think the long kind of monopoly is, is almost kind of, it's being eroded really from the, the, from the top brands. And I think they're a victim almost of their own success, but also their own kind of games in terms of not allowing people to get the stuff that they want. And I think this has allowed people to start, or sort of forced people to start looking around. At, there goes my phone to start looking around at other brands and what else is available for that price point. I think people are realizing you can actually get a much more interesting watch for the money that you would pay gray market for a lot of the, uh, a lot of the big kind of known brands. Uh, did you, get, did you couple, get annoyed? Sorry. Did you get annoyed yourself, Tom? Uh, and if you got annoyed, was it, what was it more the scarcity or more the premiums or more the arrogance? What was the, what was the thing that put you off? All of the above, to be honest. And also, to be honest with you, you know, when you go out to any of these horrible kind of swanky places, everyone's wearing one of three different watches. And that kind of got to me years ago. I'd stroll around in a, in a Patek and no one would even know what it was, apart from, you know, the sort of guys now that would, would recognize a Jean or something, something a bit more niche. But now it's kind of recognizable and it's the exclusivity of these things isn't, isn't there anymore. So... I was getting a little bit frustrated with that, and that's a bit of a weird reason. Um, but also just the dealer games, you know, buying buying crap that you don't want um, just to get something that's, you know, not actually that rare in the case of Rolex or, or Patek even. You know, most of their steel pieces that everyone goes crazy over, they're not rare at all. They're making tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands in a year um, across some Yeah, do you, I mean, there is, there is that. I mean, with independence, you know, we always sp spread the world like, um, you know, prophets in a way because we're totally into the independence. There is a cap that is quite natural with independence because they can't physically produce more than, you know, a tot, especially for the, uh, you know, the contemporary watchmakers such as Kari Butiline that we met at uh, Watch Pro Salon, for yeah. example. Whereas for the big brands, um, there is a bit of a, a, ma a major risk, even if there is scarcity today, we don't know what's going to happen in five years. So you may as well, you may pay FT premiums and then find yourself in five years in a, in a whatever, whatever situation where, you know, for a f five, five, seven, 11, I think today you're talking 80 grand and it is a watch of which inner value is probably around 10. So yeah, that, that's a major, major sh uh, s switch we need to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was saying kind of the, the dealer games thing. I mean, I haven't really ended into it. Um, I've just heard of it and I've kind of just stayed away, really. I've not developed like a long term relationship with any kind of dealers, really. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm working on just collecting bits I like. I'm not really after hype pieces. Um, I've actually got a Patek um, pilot 
coming. I think yeah. maybe later this month or next month. Not a hype piece, but I'm actually really excited about that. I know that's kind of a sometimes one people buy to get something else, but I'm not really hugely desperate for anything in the in the Patek range per se. Um, was, that, was, that, was there anything you couldn't get, Tom? Uh, in a way, uh, you know, like I know, I know the penetration that you have in the car in a car, you know, uh, world where pretty much. You could acquire pretty much what you you were you were after uh, so far. Is it the same watch? Is it? Is it? Do you know what? It's not really the, the case in cars because with someone with a bit of a profile, if you get favoritized, favoritized, I don't know that. If you receive preferential treatment, it's very visible. And then the hardcore collectors and the people that have just been buying buying these things for years, and you know the proper long term customers they go absolutely ballistic and kind of fair enough really why should i get any q jumping just because i've got a few followers on the internet so actually i found that it doesn't help a lot of the time and sometimes it actually goes against you because nobody wants to be seen to be uh, giving you favoritism because you've got a presence so it's not as helpful as you might think in the car world and certainly not in the watch world either yeah uh, early days it was the occasional dealer there'd be a young lad in a dealership um rolex particularly i got a couple of bits years back which i've still got um that just wanted me to come down collect a watch and, and kind of bugger off kind of thing and have a little chat with me when i was there that was before there was so much heat on them um yeah. I, remember I got a sea dweller red 50th anniversary thing um and the the young lad there he just he watched my videos he's like we've just got one come in do you want it sort of thing but this yeah. was 2017 that would never happen now because they've got everything's got to go through management and whatever and it's not enough for them to say oh, i watch him on youtube give him a watch <laughs> It, there is a sad, sadly so um no i've got i've got some really nice guys i deal with on the on the protect front now um and you know see what happens with that but i'm not desperate i'm excited for my pilot i'm going to put it on a funky strap um but yeah and then, and then we're going to have a little live where we're going to talk about how you do it i know your time is limited today but i've i've watched recently a, a good video by damien from the the car guys the watch guys and yeah. he explains in a video how you get these crazy pieces from the from the big brands from the yeah and that's quite quite interesting um question as a collector are you in value retention and uh, tom be be very open and honest uh, how much is value retention important you know to as a decider for your purchases in cars and in watches for me it's hugely hugely important i don't sell anything the only time you'll ever see me selling anything is if i have to um, I can't remember the last time I sold a watch, but when you set up when you set up a new business, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> yeah, something like that. But I haven't sold a watch in years. I, I sell cars more regularly than watches, but value retention is really important. I think uh, for me anyway, I don't have enough zeros in my bank account to disregard that, and I don't think you can truly, absolutely love something if you know it's cost you the earth. I think you know if. If you know you're going to buy something and it's going to lose a load of money, in my financial situation, I can't absolutely love it. I'm happy knowing that it's kept its value. I'm happy knowing that it's maybe lost a little bit. Um, but, you know, I don't, I could have more hype pieces and more pieces that have gone up more in value um, than I do. Um, you'll notice in my collection, there's, it's not a stream of, you know, white Daytonas and this, that and the other. And there's some weird stuff in there that for the same money, I could have got stuff that's gone up more. Um, but I try and toe the balance between having something that I'm not going to lose my shirt on, hopefully make, you know, some money on paper uh, and also something that I enjoy as well. So um, yeah. it, it yeah. is part of it though. And I'm, I'm just not rich enough to, to be able to disregard that sadly. It, it, on it. it is a balance. It is a balance. But yeah, as you were saying, the independents were not really playing this game up until 10 years ago, but now it's amazing how if you educate yourself and you get, you know, your stuff, there was somebody that said, um, miseducation is actually a cost for all of us. Uh, so if you know your stuff, it's amazing what you can dig up from the independence that no one else would be necessarily aware of. Yeah, definitely. And the, the door's kind of starting to close on that. I think people are wising up to it and, and jumping in the kind of the next, you know, three to five hot brands because I think it's quite cyclical and I think people are shifting away. You know, the guys that were all over the protects you know five to ten years ago or the people that were into jean you know five ten years ago before it went bonkers you know where are they now what brands are those guys getting into and it doesn't take much of a shift in the market for these brands that are making 
500 watches a year or less, you know, it takes a tiny, tiny, tiny bump in demand to send those things stratospheric. And we're dealing with an audience of people buying these things that a lot of the money's not an issue. So these things can just go through the roof so, so quickly. So yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. Value retention is it's kind of a, a frowned upon topic, but I find that side of things, I find it fascinating to me. It's like any commodity really, I just find it interesting. Absolutely. And you, you, do you feel, I mean, we're, we're living in an incredible moment in watchmaking. I mean, the, the demand is skyrocketed. You know, we don't know exactly if it's because of the um, positive, you know, situation of the financial markets, you know, the, 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 the crypto, uh, the cryptos explosion as well. We don't know what it is. But from my perspective, I wouldn't call it a bubble because the request, the demand comes from finer clients. It doesn't come from intermediaries like myself, for example, that, you know, we can create bubbles by influencing. But this really comes from, from the ground, from, uh, uh, from, from clients. First, is it the same? Do you see the same in, in, in cars as well um, at the moment? Do you see any th specific, special, positive wave happening in, you know, in the world of cars? And, and secondly, do you agree that it's quite of an organic kind of situation rather than a bubble uh, for what it looks? Yeah, definitely. I get asked this on the car front all the time. Do you think car values are a bubble? And I think uh, they're not a bubble in terms of the, there'll be a pop. I don't see it a pop moment happening anytime soon, uh, if at all. I think things might soften and stop growing at the exponential rate they're going at. Uh, but in the car world, I see the, the modern stuff that is ultimately going to be overproduced. I think that will soften. Premiums will come off those models when uh, chip shortages get sorted out. People work out what they're doing regarding Brexit. Um, but I think in terms of the collectibles and same with watches, it's only going to just keep going up, maybe at a slower rate, but I think it will just keep going up. And, and watches, I mean, basic economics, what, what are the two things that, that affect price, demand and supply? Demand, not really going anywhere. Are people going to stop liking watches next week? No. Um, if anything, the scarcity is going to, yeah, the scarcity is going to push that demand uh, again. And then people like myself, we have to be, to be really good in trying to, uh, to channel and guide uh, customers and collectors at the right time and know what is too late. In this respect, there is a question from uh, uh, Lipan25. Which are the brands, the niche brands that we think will be valuable in the next five to 10 years? Uh, shall we, shall we uh, get some names down? What do you think? I, I know I'm, uh, this is an obvious one for me, but I think Laurent Ferrier is good news. Laurent Ferrier, yeah. yeah. Really good news. Um, I like Chapek. I like yeah. that they've got a really cool brand history. It's well worth reading into if anyone's got a few few minutes. Um, I don't know after that. I, I go a bit fuzzy after that. I'm not 100%. Um, there's a few contenders in there. What about you? I'll be interested. Yeah, I, I, we're seeing incredible results from brands like uh, Armin Strong, for example, or the masters, master watchmakers such as Ludovic Balloir or Viennet Alter. Uh, there is a yeah, there is a big um, a big trend uh, now uh, for for both. But like you, Laurent Ferrier, I mean, uh, it, it will soon be too late. Exactly, and that's the problem. The, the brands that are what are the brands that are for you are too late to get into now unless you prepare a, a to wait for ages and b you know pay some very very heavy premiums. I think. Jean, I missed the boat on. I got one, uh, one yeah. elegant, say, uh, the quartz one. I got that for about... Yeah, elegant, elegant, yeah. Yeah, I got that for about 10,000, actually, in a, in a service station, actually. Um, not this <laughs> different one. I love service stations. Um, <laughs> but I missed the boat on those. I, I should have bought an Octosport. I wanted the original aluminium one. Uh, yeah. I remember they were sort of 30 grand on the resale market. No one wanted them should have bought one um but whatever you, you live yeah. and I, i'm hoping to get an octosport the new one yellow dial at some point next year god only knows it will happen i really like uh Romain, Romain gautier i can't pronounce it properly because i'm yeah yeah, yeah absolutely uh, i really like his new sports piece um i missed the boat i was too slow on that sold out straight away um well everyone missed the boat when he had he agreed with chanel you know it's kind of uh partnership with chanel and uh so there is a different level of control on Romain Gauthier that you would find on some other independents. Yeah. And Chanel bought 20% or a chunk of FP Jean anyway. No one knows the exact percentage, but I think it's about 20%. Yeah. 
defence. So um, it's interesting. It is interesting. But I, I wanted um, a logical one. Uh, Gautier, but he's, it's, too, it's too formal for me because I dressed mm. like a 15-year-old the whole time. So I wanted his sports piece. But I, I've got an order in uh, for third, third run down the line, the titanium one. Oh, yeah. But people are saying on that on that particular model, I think it's the continuum. They're saying that the the bridges and stuff are, are machine polished and not done by hand. So you know that might be that's controversial, and some people are kind of crying about it. What do you think? I think that um, uh, I have a problem when when there are smokes and mirrors um, raised by some uh, you know watchmakers or any manufacturers. So when things are not clear, and I'm not referring to any. Uh, particular British watchmaker has been on the headlines recently but when things are not clear because when things are not clear there's always something you know that, uh, to doubt about but when things are explained for what they are like for example I'm wearing the Horage Tourbillon one today it's one of the cheapest tourbillons ever made in Switzerland six grand and it tells you exactly what it is if you go on the specifications online on the limited yeah. edition and it's just great value without uh, without bragging uh, too much on it it just gives you exactly what it is and that's what i appreciate so uh yeah another maybe one last question tom i know you have to go but um in terms of limited editions that's a funny one because we are called the limited edition since the beginning when we started six years ago but do you do you enjoy uh brands uh focusing on limited editions do you think limited editions are necessary there is too many to be honest with you I I just think when a brand does too many limited editions, it just starts to get a bit boring and it starts to devalue the brand. Um, I think brands that are doing it, and I love them at the moment, uh, but I think they need to just watch how many limited editions they're doing. I really like GP. I've been a huge advocate of GP from the start. Um, well, not obviously the start. In 1791, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't alive. I feel like I was, but I wasn't. Um, <laughs> But I think they're doing a lot of they're doing a lot of limited editions now, and it's it's difficult. I think it diversifies a bit too much potentially. I don't think they're there yet, but I think they're running the risk of that. And I think IWC have gone crazy on the uh, limited edition stuff as well. I like it. They do cool editions, um, and every version they do, I do really like. Um, but I think if they continue at that pace throughout 2022, just doing as many limited editions as they had, particularly the second half of, of 2021. Um, I don't know. I think they might lose people. So, um, yeah. I really, I really also like, as you know, Girard Pergot, and I think uh, I always look at them with great interest. Do they function? You're more of, of an insider in that respect. Do, do they function more as a big brand, you think, or do they, do they show that independent spirit, that, you know, people like me? Uh, yeah. So, in particular? There's not that many people there. I've been to their manufacturer, mm -hmm. and there's very few people there um, all the watchmakers have got their little wooden sticks out. Um, it's, it's cool. It's quite, it's not rudimental. They've got some very high tech kit there, but it felt to me very much like, a, like an independent. Obviously, they're owned by the Kering Group, so Balenciaga and whoever's in that, in, in that umbrella. But it feels to me like they're very kind of off on their own and they do their own thing. Um, and I like that. I do like yeah. that. And it's very few people that you actually deal with internally and they kind of, they call the shots. So um, I think their CEO is fantastic as well. What's his name? I forgot. Did you say Patrick? Patrick is Patrick. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Is really, yeah. Um, Tell me one one thing that nobody says uh, because I've worked for GP in the past and I know exactly the workshop. Most of the watchmakers and uh, you know masters was watchmakers are actually ladies. As well, and it's something that yeah. it, come, it doesn't come across enough. I, I don't think uh, in a. I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised because obviously men and women are kind of they're equal and whatnot. So I wasn't surprised, but I don't know why. But you just kind of, just kind of think that the watch industry is a bit more male based, and there yeah. wouldn't be that many kind. Of, you think of watchmakers, rightly or wrongly. Well, I do anyway. I think of a little old man kind of working away. Um, but there's some very f fresh. <laughs> women there i think um no it was cool it was cool to see and the, the work they do is bonkers it gave me a newfound kind of respect for for the watches i had particularly the skeletons how much work goes into them almost felt guilty There's so much work that goes into those watches it's bonkers absolutely, absolutely. listen tom and talking about uh ladies watchmakers i'm gonna see you next time uh very soon at fiona kruger's 
showcase. I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, yes, that would be that would be fun. I really appreciate your time and you stopping uh, stopping for us on on your way, Tom. And I'll, uh, I look forward to yeah to have another chat very soon if that's all right with you. Not at all, mate. And today I've I've let the side down. You <laughs> that's bad before the line. He said, "What watch are you wearing?" I said, "I've been doing some DIY today, so uh, absolutely nothing." So if you're thinking of coming and robbing me in the service station as well, uh, again, <laughs> be a wasted trip. Sometimes safety is is the first thing, mate. So yeah, all good. All good. Uh, Good time, mate. Appreciate it. And um, if anyone's got any sort of comments or questions or anything you, you want us guys to discuss, drop me a DM or do, drop uh, Pietro a DM as well, and we'll, we'll discuss some more stuff. But we're going to be doing some more stuff together down the line. I've got three orders in with you, uh, Laurent Ferrier and two Chapex. So we'll be talking about those soon as well. We'll take care. We'll take care of those. And uh, yes, as you're saying, I think there's so much to be said about the parallels between the world of cards, the world of watchmaking. And I guess this is just the start. I need to be educating myself. Uh, as an Italian, I'm an embarrassment for not being into cars, you know? I am an embarrassment, useless. But I get better. We'll, 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 give, you, we'll give you a training course. I'll take you out on the test roster. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Can't wait. Thank you, Tom. You take care and I'll see you soon. I'll see you later, mate. Ciao. Bye, everyone.